Hello everyone. One day, a burglar was brought before a judge for trial. The man had already been charged with burglary five times and found guilty each time. Before sentencing him, the judge said, You are here for the sixth time. You seem to be a professional burglar. Do you have anything to say? The burglar said, You ask me why I keep committing the same crime? Well, Your Honor, it is like this. The more a man has, the more a man wants. The judge replied, Is that so? You say the more a man has, the more a man wants. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am sentencing you to seven years in jail. How many more would you like? Friends, the burglar, the man who asked Jesus to help him settle the inheritance dispute with his brother, and the rich farmer we hear about in today's gospel, and so many others among us are obsessed with a desire for possessions. The Bible describes greed as one of the seven deadly sins. The world around us keeps telling us to plan ahead and accumulate as much wealth as possible for a comfortable and secure life. But in today's Gospel, Jesus sets before us the ways of God to counter the ways of the world. Accumulation of wealth may appear to be prudent and wise, but Jesus deems it foolish and dangerous because Jesus says in today's Gospel, one's life does not consist of possessions. As Jesus was preaching to the people about fear and anxiety, a man asked Jesus to arbitrate the inheritance dispute between him and his brother. But Jesus wanted to help him make peace with God rather than with his brother. Even though he was demanding for his own fair share of the inheritance, Jesus wanted him to know that life is about giving, not getting, sharing, not having more. Jesus' message was simple and direct to all who were listening to him. He warned them against all kinds of greed. Desire for more seems to be the root cause of greed. The man who sought Jesus had a strong desire to acquire more wealth without any thought of whether or not he needed them. He was more concerned about what he had on earth than what he would have in heaven. So Jesus warned him and others against their desire for more earthly possessions and told them a parable to illustrate the point that they must instead use their possessions to pursue a generous and joyful life, a life that is rich toward God, a life that matters to God. The farmer in the parable was blessed with a rich harvest but wanted to store all of it for himself and fantasize what he would do with it. He talked to himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, now, as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. 
friends. Notice how many times he used I and my. He shut out everyone and everything else from his life. He definitely did not work nor harvest the crops himself. The harvest is plentiful also because of the soil and favorable weather. But he did not think of anyone else, let alone God. He was preoccupied with his possessions. He maximized his own pleasure. Greed took hold of his life. It all came to an end when God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? In the scriptures, the word fool refers to those people who live their lives as if there were no God, and everything, including their physical life, is under their control. In Psalm 14 verse 1 it says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Their deeds are corrupt and vile, not one of them does right. In the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, Chapter 22, verse 13, the writer calls on us not to follow the fools. Do not waste many words on the stupid. Do not go near a dolt or an idiot. Beware of him, or you will have trouble and be tainted by him. Keep away from him, and you will have peace of mind and not be exasperated by his folly. Many among us could be more foolish than the rich fool Jesus speaks of in the parable. First of all, we must know that it is not wrong for us to enjoy the things of the world. The possessions are not evil in themselves, or neither are the people who have them. But it is dangerous though when we allow them to become too important. The desire for possessions has the capacity to make us arrogant, dishonest, exploitative and self-seeking. It has the power to block God out of the picture and ignore the needs of the neighbor. And it can obscure us from the glory of God. Therefore, let us be honest. We all, whether we are rich or poor, single or married, priests or lay people, have the tendency to want more. The more we have, the more we want. The appetite for more possessions is never satisfied. We are never content. Today's Gospel is a reminder to protect ourselves from the strong desire for more and more possessions. Let us keep ourselves from the evils and sins that greed can lead to. How many families, marriages, relationships have been destroyed because of our greed for material possessions? Let us beware of the great temptation to put our faith and trust in them rather than in God. As St. Paul says in today's second reading, Colossians chapter 3 verse 5, Let us put to death whatever earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Second, let us be thankful to God for all His many blessings. It is important to acknowledge that all the things we have in this world come from God, and in every possession there is a contribution from another human being. We are blessed so that we might be a blessing to others. Let us be generous 
and willing to share the excess we have with those who are less fortunate. Third, our relationship with God is much more important than our possessions. God knows quite well what's deep within our human heart. He knows that in spite of our piety and devotion to Him, we are attached to the pleasures of the flesh, money, power, prestige and possessions. Sometimes we measure our self-worth and others by how much we have or how many things we own or how we look. We live in a world of illusion, vanity of vanities, as the author of the book of Ecclesiastes calls it. Let us examine today how we shut ourselves from God and others because of our own greed. Let us ask God for forgiveness and mercy. As Saint Paul says today in his letter to the Colossians, let us seek the things that are above. Let us set our minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Amen. God bless you.